Hi. In this video we will create a seamless procedural tartan texture based on a bitmap. To do this we open a file called tartanmanual.blend. As you can see there are three collections in it. Text edit collection, we'll use it to reproduce the tartan pattern. Cloth preview collection, here we will adjust the visual texture parameters. Example collection, contains an example of a ready pattern. Ok, we will now import a bitmap to the 3D view using the images as planes add-on and adjust the scale to the existing plane. Let's open the same file in the image editor window to number the colors and to take their samples. Describing the order of colors will allow us to better assign individual colors to appropriate slots of the shader group. Since some of the colors are repeated we will create a few RGB nodes, we will take color samples and assign them to the appropriate slots. As you can see in this case we will need 5 RGB nodes. Ok, now is the value of the first slot we have to give the number of threads forming the left upper rectangle, as we remember from the first video it was 6. Our next step is to increase the value of the number of threads slider until the width of the first color of our texture equals the width of the first bitmap color. To get a sharper view of the bitmap, change the texture display mode to closest. As you can see, a value of 270 is appropriate, here it must be an integer with no decimal points, this will help us render seamless texture. The next step is to adjust values for the remaining colors.
Ok, we mapped the complete pattern, so we can go to the cloth preview collection. There are slightly different lighting conditions here and a link to the HDR texture used in the world shader can be found in the description. Now let's focus on the top of the shader to see what possibilities it offers. AO slider adds ambient occlusion effect. When we move it to a value greater than zero we can add an additional effect using the fiber slider, which allows for a slight increase in realism. Dust slider allows to add an effect similar to a dirty fabric. Peeling slider simulates the effect of long-term use of the fabric, additionally adding the most realism to our texture. Distortion slider is a little bit tricky and works similarly to the noise node. In my opinion its optimal values are between 0.6 and 1. The map of normal does not use bump node because in case of procedural textures it is incredibly slow and in our case it would make it impossible to use shader completely. So I created from scratch a setup that bypassed bump node and significantly accelerated the whole group. It looks like our texture is finished and ready to use in any project. But what if we want to use it in another program? No problem, we just need to render it as a seamless texture. To do this, let's go back to the previous collection, which is Tax Edit. Let's create a new camera and change the type from perspective to orthographic and the scale value from 6 to 2 because our plane has default dimensions. So far so good. Now we have to make sure that our texture will be seamless after rendering. To check it, let's duplicate our plane and move it to the right by two blender units so that it sticks with its left edge to the first plane. Good, now let's go to the shader editor window and combine the seamless checkout put of our shader with the base color and put in the principled BSDF. Let's bring the view closer to where the two planes connect to each other, and as we see something is wrong because the pattern is not consistent. This is because the value of the number of thread slider must be divided by 4 without any decimal points. In this case we have to change 270 to 272 or 268, so that we get a seamless pattern of our texture, and only the width of the last color will change. Alright, now we're sure that our texture is right. We're connecting the notes in the right way. We also need to set the value 0 on the distortion slider because it is not possible to render it as a seamless slice. Effects such as dust and pilling are also subject to these restrictions, but their inconsistency at the edges of the texture will be virtually invisible, so we can include them. Great, now let's set the resolution of our texture to 1K and do the first test render. Let's check in the repeat view if everything is ok. And as expected it's not. As you can see the problem is the edge of the texture, where bright lines are visible. This is because the camera takes half the information for the pixel from the texture and the other half from the environment. To fix this, let's scale the plane 3 times and change the value of the pattern global scale slider from 1 to 3, and do the render again. And finally, success, we managed to achieve the correct seamless texture that we can use in other programs. In the next video we will check how the automatic texture generation method works.